<laughs> the problem was I, I can't even see if they're they're in focus. But this is my Chincoteague Peter's honey, which it is today the 18th or 19th September the 18th or 19th. Or is it's it? actually the 23rd the, or 4th. <laughs> wow. I'm just a little behind, aren't yeah. I? The 23rd or 4th. Yeah. And we're not even sure about 24th. that. 24th. 24th? Right. Okay. Well, anyway, you can see that my Peter's honey in Shinkatig just continues to be productive delicious and outstanding in every regard it is certainly among the very top cultivars in my collection I've had this tree in my collection for 26 years and this tree has been here in this spot too for 26 years uh, I don't know if I can show this but if you look down in here Wow I don't think I can do it. It's hard to do. But look at the size of that. Put your hand over there, Dev, if you can. On top of that big no, no, you can. On top of that big stump down there. Too. There you go. Can you put your hand over top of that? That's how big a that's how big around that tree was when I cut it down. Huge. What was that a foot diameter no exaggeration and I've been cutting this back for 26 years last year I cut it completely in half more than half probably down to a third because if I don't it just outgrows the house it just keeps growing it's truly a spectacular variety Peter's honey they get ripe they just keep getting ripe there's a huge breba crop, especially on the branches that you haven't cut back. <laughs> I leave I always leave some lower nice branches so that I get a good breba crop. When I severely prune it in the fall, I, I leave branches, low branches. And you can see this, that's not hard to do because there's branches everywhere on Peter's honey and there's figs everywhere on Peter's honey. And you get a nice breba crop of delicious, figs I keep ranting about this fig variety I I want to share it I want people to know what a good cultivar for the Northeast is and there are several we've talked about them but this is among them but it's I see that it's in very few collectors collections uh, it, it, it never ceases to amaze me and befuddle me to be honest with you because I don't see Celeste true Celeste I don't see true Celeste and I don't see true or I don't see Peter's honey in most collectors collections and you know hey I'm all for trying new varieties and I like exotic varieties too but I'm pretty practical I like to stick with winners you know it's okay to experiment and gamble a little bit and try different varieties I'm all for it I've been doing it all my life but you still have to stick to a basic strategy which is stay with the winners stay with the winners you know the, the ones that keep producing and pumping out figs year after year after year after year in spite of the weather in spite of the cold they're winter hardy they're productive delicious disease-free and they are able to handle the rigors of all of the adversities that mother nature will throw in their direction that's what really determines a successful cultivar when we're discussing figs and you can just see how incredibly productive this variety is I mean you know you're talking about picking hundreds of figs over a season hundreds not not three or four figs and 
you know, fussing around with a prima donna fig for 12 months so that, you know, you, you care for it, you fertilize it, you water it, you shuffle it in and out, and you get three figs, or if, even if you get a dozen figs. Come on. Think about that for a minute. And you can't put it in the ground, which that's fine. I mean, I like certain container varieties, and we've talked about that in my videos. And certain container varieties like Smith and, and Rondi Bordeaux, which you can also put in the ground. But they're absolutely superb in containers. Peter's Honey's not. Peter's Honey doesn't like containers. I mean, it's good. People like it. But it's it's nowhere near as good as it is if you put it in the ground. And this is a fig that, even though it's a Sicilian fig, brought back from Sicily by a man named Peter's, uh, still, notwithstanding the fact that it comes from Sicily, it is very hardy. And the fact that it has been here for 26 years, this is zone 7B, and has been back in my yard in New Jersey, which is zone 7A, for 26 years, and every single one of my Peter's honeys, and I have six in the ground, every one of them comes from the same stock. It's a superior stock. Is a testament. The fact that they've been growing for 26 years in two zones, 7A and 7B, in the ground is a testament to their superiority, to its superiority. There is no question about it. And you're looking at it. You're looking at, let's get back so that you can get a scale. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> try not to fall into the little water here. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> Almost. Uh, you know, I see some mullet down there swimming around. I'm getting off the track. Oh, yeah, look at all the mullet. Can you see them? There they go. I don't know if you can see them. This, this creek here has jellyfish and sea turtles, and there was a sea otter, and oh gosh, there's just turtles. And fish and large flounder and plenty of blue crab. Uh, that's another that's another subject altogether. But I just wanted you to see the scale of this tree. And keep in mind that I cut this tree back to about five foot tall <laughs> last fall. So it's 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 really an impressive fig variety that I just I mean look at those golden delicious figs. If you like honey figs, if you like figs, because every fig is a fig. It's a fig is a fig. A fig is a fig. There's black ones, there's green ones, there's white ones, there's, there's honey figs. There's, they're all figs. That's what they are. And everyone tastes differently. And many of them are superb and delicious and suitable for us growers to grow in the north, in the northeast, in the north, in humid environments. And they can under, they can undergo and endure the rigors of our poor climate. And we single those out. I don't see this one being used or being grown enough, I don't think. Because I know just how much success I've had with it. So that's why I rant about it. For your benefit. Because I want you to be successful. I want... The new people that are coming into the hobby of figs. And I'm trying to encourage that as much as possible. That's my agenda. I want them to be successful. Because if they're not, if they pick varieties that aren't suitable, and they might have six syllables in their names and come from some exotic place overseas. This one comes from an exotic place overseas. It comes from Sicily. But, but it, you know... It's not a tongue twister. It's there's no seven cylinders. Seven. <laughs> Let's just put it this way. It is a, a simple cultivar, which has withstood the rigors of time, and it is inter, it is being sold by several large nurseries. It has been for decades, for decades. And isn't that in itself 
an endorsement for this variety, for this cultivar. But I want the new people rushing into the hobby of figs, and they are so welcome because I just love the, the enthusiasm being generated. I want them to benefit from successful cultivars. And so why not add this one to their collection? All right, probably wearing out the subject, but I'm determined <laughs> to convince some new people out there that are entering into this incredible, my favorite hobby. Uh, I, I want them to try this. I want them to try this. And the others that I've been talking about for several months are Lumontis figs. It's been a fun summer. It's not over, as you can see. There's still plenty of figs to eat, and I intend to eat them all. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm just having the time of my life, even though my wife mentioned a little while ago, Debbie, that... We are now in officially in fall. And so that's a little sad, isn't it? That's a bit of a shocker. The summer seems to have come and gone so quickly as it always does. This is the way of summer. It comes and it goes so, so quickly. I don't know if I should take a little walk this way. I don't know. Well, maybe I'll say goodbye this way. Look at a couple of my trees. Oh, wow. A lovely yellow rose. How beautiful. This is my Excel tree, which I featured several times. And you can see that it is also productive and still producing figs. They will continue to get ripe. I've been gobbling these things down like crazy the last few days. I should have probably took this video when I first got to the Shinkatig. This is my Hardy Chicago. This has also been here for 26 years. I planted these trees when I first purchased the property, when Debbie and I first bought it. We, uh, I put in my fig trees. I've had lots of different varieties, I've tried lots of different varieties, many of which failed, and many did not fail. So, over time, The ones that are most successful are still here. This is a newly planted in the spring, a very early spring. I put a small starter fig, in JH Adriatic. And the deer have been eating the leaves off. They come in here quite frequently. And I had one beautiful ripe fig right over here somewhere. And I had a bag here, right here. I had a bag over it. And then all of a sudden when I came, my friend Steve had visited me. And I came over here to get that ripe J.H. Adriatic. And guess what? We found, <coughs> we found the bag on the ground. The fig was it was had been ripped into, and the fig was gone. And I believe it was a a raccoon. We've got a lot of wildlife around here, deer and raccoons and such. like it here. I 
always love this location. I've always loved my fig trees here. This is the beginning of the end of summer. Have a good day.